Hi, this is Precalculus Money Spreadsheet Assignment. Show me the money. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do extension number one. So this is an example of where I took what I had done before with the Monte Carlo method, and I said, well, let's prepare for the uncommon event. And you can read a little bit more about this with uh, Fooled by Randomness or the Black Swan by Nasim Taleb. Uh, Taleb Nasim. I forget which way it is, sorry. And uh, what happens with this, though, is that we try to deal with the uncommon event. And so we're going to look at, uh, in the previous example, we did a plus or minus 15 range. And you can change that if you wish and play around with that. However, what I want to do is also say that there's a 1% chance of really increasing and a 1% chance of really decreasing. And so I need to change this model a little bit. And here's an example of an if-then statement to put this together. So let's go to a spreadsheet and start developing this idea. Well, let me do something else. So in uh, Blackboard, I have a, a file here that's called Spreadsheet Extension Help. And that's what we're going to be doing here. So what you want to do is you want to take your value. And we, I'm using, for example, 10.3%. And with that 10.3%, I want to add 15% and subtract 15% as I did before. And so if I do this, uh, and I guess this is upside down from the other aspect that I have, but it should still be okay. I'm going to take this and add uh, 15%, so 25.3%. I'm going to subtract this, so it's negative 4.7%. But now I want to look at a really big jump. And so with the random number, since it's between 0 and 1, it matches up with probability very well. So with, with this, I have a 1% chance that I'm going to drop a bunch, like 100%. And here I'm going to have a 1% chance that I'm going to grow a lot. And so there are there's small chances, and you can play around with these numbers. I just made this up, uh, what you might think happens. but what might happen in a particular year is I might jump 100% off this 10.3. And now yours is obviously different. Uh, this number is different, but this is kind of the situation that you're going to be doing. And then you're going to subtract 100 from this. So that would be 89.7. Okay, so there's your numbers. Now what has to happen in order to make this work is that you have to have three isolated incidents. Incidents. So I need to take these two. These were going to be two x values and these are going to be two y values. And I want to write a linear equation for this. And then I'm going to do that again. And this is very similar to what we did uh, for part two, except for I have just more categories and the equations are a little bit more difficult to get, but it shouldn't be too bad. So now you're going to take these two x values and these two y values and write another equation. And then finally, you're going to take these two and write a third equation with these two as x's and these two as y's. And you're going to put that here. So what I did is I showed it down here. Okay, so from 0 to 0 0.01, I take my x and y values and I put it into a, an equation. And I use the form y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. This is what we call point slope form. Okay, and so then I put that in, and then here's my y value, so there it is there. This 85 is my slope, and then the rand number minus 0. Now you look at this 85, and then you look at this 0 0.036, what did I do? Well, I'm using 0.897, and I'm using 0 0.047, so I'm not doing that division by 100 anymore. I just moved the decimal places over like I did here for these values. And when I divide by this 0 0.01, well, that makes the number uh, a whole number like that, 85. Okay? So you should get a setup like this and get your three equations. Now, with that, we have to add in what we call an if-then statement. And, uh, well, and this translates to a piecewise function, too. So between this value, I have this equation. And I simplified this. And here's another piecewise, and here's another piecewise. But those are my three equations. And so if my random number turns out to be in between 0 and 0 0.01, I'm going to use this equation. If it's going to be in between here, I'm going to use this one, and so on. Okay, so what happens then is that I can set up what we call an if-then statement. So if 
my r, my random number, falls in this category, then I'm going to use this equation. It's just really what I just said. And then if, then, if, then. Okay, those three different situations. Now, to put that into the spreadsheet, though, and use a little bit of computer language, we have to change this around a little bit. So what this says then is that if r is greater than 0.99, and I'm using the top end, I, you could use the top end or bottom end, but I'm going to use this equation first. If r is greater than 0.99, then the spreadsheet will use this equation. So if this, then we use that equation. That's all this first part does. Now there's a if then else. And so if this is not true, this piece right here, it skips over to the next instruction. So the next instruction says that if I'm greater than 0 0.01, well remember I already took these out and it applied this. So if I end up 0.5 for instance, that's going to be satisfied here and then I'm going to apply this equation here. This is a nested if then statement. Now if it's not greater than 0 0.01, what's going to happen? Well, then it's going to fall in this category here. So it does the else here. So this is the first big else, and then here's the last else. Okay, so say for instance we do take 0.5. Let's see what happens. 0.5, true or false? It's false. So it will skip over this piece and go to the next piece. Then it's is 0.5 greater than 0 0.01. Oh, that's true. So it will implement this. If I do a value of 0 0.001, that's false. So I'll skip this. That's false. So I'll skip this, and then it will apply this last one. So that's what's happening with the nested if-then statement. Okay? Uh, and then, um, well, we can also take 0.995. And what will happen with that one then is that point. 995, true or false? Oh, that's true. So then it will implement this and it skips all the rest of this, these items here. So it just will use this equation. So that's how the nested if then statement ends up working. So you just got to get your equations right. So on the spreadsheet then, I'm going to put in this formula. I don't know if you can see this up on top. I think my parentheses are better here than they were on the other sheet. And I don't use R, but I use where the random number is for that particular one. And then I can grab this little handlebar and fill down. And then there are all my values. Oh, look at this one. Here's a very small random number. And look at what happens. I have only left 18% of my original investment after this year. So that's going to be a huge plunge. I'll let you play with the graphs and everything to see that. And it's just kind of fun to play with, I guess. Okay, and I'll try to do control squiggle, but this formula becomes quite long. But that gives you an idea of how to do the if-then statement. Okay, so I hope that this helps with that extension. And then I hope you get some really good ideas for your own extension, which may include the math parts, which may include investing discussions, uh, and can go in a lot of different directions for your own extensions. This is just an example of one extension that I decided to do after I did my first uh, little uh, Monte Carlo method. And I'm just playing the uncommon event and looking for big drops and big rises. All right, I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope that this helps with your project. I hope your project looks great. Take care. Bye.